Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the channel and uh, back to the Quantel uh, paint box restoration series that I'm going to be doing. Uh, this video should be uh, fairly short, um, might be a bit waffly, uh, but I just wanted to um, give everybody an update of what's happened between uh, part one and what's going to be happening in part three. Um, when I made part one, um, I wasn't quite sure where I was going to be going in terms of what I'm going to be looking at because uh, there was just too many unknowns but I'm getting, starting to get to the point now I know what path I'm, I'm going to be going down um, so I can sort of plan a bit more. So I just wanted to bring you all up to speed on what's been happening since part one uh, because there has been quite a few uh, things uh, going on. Now one of the first things I noticed when I was uh, trying to get this running I was actually uh, probing around with my logic analyzer making some connections onto uh, computer 2 um, uh, with the card tucked in the back there and I realized that the the card wasn't even plugged into the back plane um, I was I was actually dumbstruck by it um, so I did a bit of investigation and it turns out that the highway the back plane which is a huge great, great big eight layer PCB which sits in the back here it's as big as the front of the machine that was out of position um, there was missing screws it was not in the right place so um, probably a good portion of these cards weren't even plugged in. So um, I went down a major rabbit hole, um, opened up the back, had to take everything apart, um, reassemble it, get everything back in the right place where it should be, put screws in where they were missing. Um, it was a bit of a monumental task. But um, the highway is now back where it should be. The cards plug in properly. Um, so that is a, a great move forward because um, if I hadn't noticed that, I could have spent days and days and days just getting nowhere. So once that was sorted, I was able to just power this up and um, actually start trying to figure out why computer one um, wasn't talking to computer two. Now in part one, I mentioned that I was going to be replacing an IC, uh, one of the address decoders. I tested that out of circuit and it worked absolutely fine. So that obviously wasn't the, the issue. Uh, finally tracked it down to some of the dip switches uh, just weren't set properly. Uh, the service manual didn't have the configuration set up for um, the EEPROMs that I've got on this machine so um, I didn't really know what they should be so I had to use the logic analyzer um, look what the inputs are and what the, it's supposed to be comparing um, so I eventually got that sorted got the dip switches in the right place powered it on and the 68000 does it starts up um, it grabs the um, SSP address and the program counter out of EEPROM jumps to the code, starts executing Quantel, Quantel's code. Um, it doesn't get very far. Um, sometimes you'll power this on um, and it will literally go bus error straight away. It will literally get as far as grabbing um, the SSP and the program counter, jump to a bit of code and then it'll just fall over with bus errors. Um, sometimes you turn this on um, and it will run for about 700 milliseconds um, and, and then just hit lots of bus errors and then eventually it'll get to a, a double bus error and that's when the CPU just give, gives up basically. So that is about where I am at the moment. It's a, a major step forward I have to say. I mean it sounds disastrous but um, there could just be one tiny little thing which is causing this problem and that's what I'm going to try and find in part three because um, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be disconnecting all this. There's not really much more I can gain from having all these all these probes on here. So uh, there's a few things I want to do to computer one, um, get everything disconnected. I'm going to resolder the socket on the 68000 um, and I want to replace some um, buffers that are on the 68000 address bus. Um, there's, as I said, there's just some odd stuff going on. I just want to replace these buffers just to prove to myself that it's not them. Um, so we'll see if that makes any difference. Um, now, in, in case you're wondering, well, isn't this card going to be trying to talk to these? Could, could there be a fault on these other cards here? Um, I don't think so. Uh, it doesn't appear that the computer one and computer two are booted up enough yet to start talking to these cards. Um, I know where the registers are um, that the two computer cards use to access these and there's no activity on it. So I think whatever the fault is, I'm pretty certain it's on this card. Um, I just need to track down exactly what it is. If it's not the three buffer 
um, ICs that I'm going to be replacing. It, it's something to do with the 8-bit um, peripherals. Um, there's a number of uh, things on here. We have um, a CRT controller. Uh, we've got some RAM and a serial port um, on this card, as well as some other hardware registers, which allows the machine to talk to these other cards. Now it seems to be when um, the 68000 is running and it's trying to initialize all of this stuff that that's where it seems to um, have issues so I'm pretty certain the problem's going to be on here. Right I think that pretty much concludes this video I wanted to keep it fairly short and uh, I think there's going to be more interesting stuff to come in part three so uh, keep an eye out for that it won't be long uh, probably just a couple of days so I will see you soon bye for now.